I'm a quiet guy, naturally. I'm a shy person, naturally. And I used to get my hair cut on a barber shop in 15th Street Northeast. And I would go there and, uh, and everyone in the barber shop would just snap on each other. And I'd sit in the corner and I'd, and I'd watch everybody and just listen to all these jokes. The guys were funny as shit, but, but one day, after a few weeks of going there, getting my hair cut, they, they, they turned the, the jokes on me. <laughs> <laughs> I call that day the barbershop massacre. <laughs> I lit everybody in that barbershop up. I've been sitting in there listening to them for weeks, talk about each other. I knew every inside joke about each and every one of them, and they couldn't believe I knew this stuff. I lit their asses up. <laughs> And from then on, in the neighborhood, people kind of like me. Oh, this guy, he's, he's pretty funny. Time Magazine released an article about Bill Cosby. The headline said, 50 Funny and Filthy Rich. And I read that article, and it was when I was looking at his face before all that disgrace that I looked and I said, I could do that. I told my father, and my father said, well, then just do it. So I wouldn't even know where to start. And he said, well, look in the phone book. It was before the internet, if you're young. <laughs> we used to have a book with phone numbers in it. Of. <laughs> My father found for me the local comedy club in Washington, D.C. I called him. I found out when open mic night was. And I started to go there on Tuesday nights, and just watch. And then one night I went on a weekend. I would, I would get my money together and I would go to this comedy club and I would just watch these comedians. And sometimes, sometimes they would talk to me. And I told one of the comedians after a show one night, I said, man, I really want to try to do this. And, and he said, well, he said, he said, if you want to be a good comedian, you should know how to act. I said, why? He says, you know, he didn't explain it. <laughs> I said, okay, and I told my parents, and, and this is how I came to find out about Duke Ellington, my mother. She said, there's a place you can go where you can learn to act right here in Washington. It's a, it's a high school. I said, you mean I would get out of Eastern? <laughs> The school year was already in full swing, and Ellington has a policy that they don't let people just come in the middle of the year. But Linda Gravatt, who was the head of the theater department at the time, very graciously took a meeting with me and my mother, and I get emotional thinking about it. Anybody that went here, Remember what it was first like when you first walked through the door? And it was in the afternoon and everyone was in their arts classes and the girls had tutus on. And, and everyone was weird and walking around the hallway like you weren't sure anyone was supposed to be and you could hear people practicing their horns and shit all through the hallways. There was art bouncing off the walls. The minute I walked through the door, there was a gallery of all these children's work, and these pictures were amazing. <laughs> My first thought, when I walked through that door, I'm not good enough to be here, I'm sure. Ms. Gravatt sat me down, she told me about the school, and you remember Ms. Gravatt, she was very businesslike, but also very warm. She was intimidating, but palpably kind. She was a paradox of a human being. And she gave me a date for an audition. My mother said, okay, Dave, it's on you. Now, those of you who know me <laughs> know that I didn't prepare for that audition. <laughs> That audition was like a, a possession. It was just something that I was proud to have. <laughs> but 
But as the days got closer, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get, I gotta get something together. I didn't even know how to do an audition. I'd never done it before. So I went, I said, I said what do I need? They said, a monologue. I, uh, so I looked up monologue. <laughs> and I went to the library, the MLK library, this huge library, and said, I gotta find something. And I found a piece in one of those yellow script books. It was a monologue by, by Mark Twain called The Judge's Spirited Woman. I learned it in a night. You know, not hard for me to memorize things. The next day, it was a Saturday, I think, and I came to the school and they auditioned what used to be this room, the original theater at Duke Ellington School of the Arts. And all the department heads sat in here and the lights are in your eyes and there's a bunch of kids who already go to the school who come on Saturday just to see who might be coming. <laughs> and I talked to all these kids before I went in and these kids were nothing like the kids at Easton. They were like them, but they were different. They were weird and funny and <laughs> self-deprecating, things like this. And I remember I came out on stage and I did my audition and it was like, like terrible. I, I froze up in the beginning. I started and then I said, wait a minute, I'm messing up. I'm gonna start again. And I was nervous and I was scared. And, and in the middle of the audition, I'm in the middle of the monologue, uh, one of the teachers, Fred Lee, he said, Fred Lee, she goes, okay, that's enough. I said, well, there's still a little more. He goes, no, 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 no. That is enough, he said. <laughs> And I, I can't tell you, like, I, I was crushed. Uh, without saying his disapproval, I knew and stunk. And I was right. When I walked in here, I knew I wasn't good enough to go to this school. And I thought to myself, ah, fuck this school. That's stupid anyway. In first year theater, there's a question that they ask students from time to time. And it's a make or break question. And when we ask this question, you don't know. And the question is this. They say, why do you want to act? Now, if you say anything like, I want to be a star, you're not, you're not going to get in. I didn't know that. <laughs> And I figured I already blew the audition, so I told him the truth. He said, why do you want to act? I don't. <laughs> That's what I said. And they said, well, then why are you here? I said, because I want to be a comedian, and some comedian told me that if I want to be a good comedian, I need to learn how to act. And the teachers look at each other and go, thank you very much, and I left. <laughs> and I was walking down the hallway, kicking rocks. There was a kid that already went here. His name was Echo Handy. And Echo said, hey, man, I listened to him talking about you. I said, you did? He said, you're in. I said, what? He said, you're in. Well, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> Somehow we worked it out so that they gave me an early enrollment. And I left Eastman within weeks of that. And I came to Duke Ellington, and it was better than I could have ever imagined. <laughs> 